I was ironing the body of this shirt and as I pulled the iron back, the cord actually caught hold of the end of the shirt and I pulled the iron back and I've ended up with a big set of creases at the end of the shirt. So now I'll have to re-iron that section. It's only a little section. It's Mel here and welcome back to Mel's Blind Life, the YouTube channel all about blindness and also welcome to our guest. Good morning everyone. I think we've met before. My name's Kate and I'm Mel's mum. And Mel's mum Kate is a domestic, well, goddess <laughs> because she does a lot more domestic things than I can ever be bothered and today... What horrendous task are you showing us? Probably my most horrendous task. The one that I hate and the one that I don't do unless I really have to. Ironing. So let's see how a blind person irons. So as you can see, what I have set up at the moment is the ironing board. On the ironing board, I have a jug and the iron. Would you tap them please? This is the jug holding up to you now mm -hmm. and here is the iron. Look at that beautiful clean iron that's because I never use it. What I need to do first is actually go and get some water. I'm a little bit funny with my iron. I like to use the filtered water because I think that it prevents the iron from getting nasty things inside it and keeps it cleaner. So we'll fill up the water and we'll take it back over to the iron. And this is actually the hardest part as a blind person, trying to fill the iron without spilling all the water everywhere. I'm going to lift back the little cover and I'm going to try and pour the water into the iron. So I'm using my left thumb to check that the water's actually going in the correct little hole. This is a really good jug because it's got a very pointy um, nozzle so that the water actually is quite directed when you are pouring it and of course the iron has a limit of how much it fits so when the water starts to overflow onto my thumb i know that i've put enough water in the problem now is that because the iron is still cold and the water is no use to us until it's creating steam I'm going to have to turn on the iron and wait two or three minutes for it to warm up. What I thought I would start out with is something very simple, like a handkerchief. This technique you would probably use for things like pillow slips and tea towels, and if you're really into sheets and things like that. My technique is that I lay the hanky on the um, board with the inside facing up and I, in, I the inside is um, done by checking the hemming and I can see where it's been hemmed, which side's the inside and which side's the outside. What I will then do is I'll flatten it out or, and try and reduce how many wrinkles are in it right from the start because one thing that I find as a blind person, if I don't make sure that it's flat, I can't see where the wrinkles are going to be and I can't um, actually put my hand under where I want the iron to be. And then um, having sorted it out, got as many wrinkles out as possible, I'll take the iron in my right hand, because I'm right-handed, 
and I place it to the right hand side of the hanky and with my left hand hold pushing the right hand side out so that I came I started partly in from the edge and then straighten the edge out with my left hand now going across the top doing the same straightening the edge out with my left hand as I bring the iron down to follow and then I'll do the middle so um, now I'm going to fold the hanky in half so now the hanky in half has got the outside of the hanky facing up and I'll do the same technique so I've flattened it out fairly straight I'm going to start just in from the right hand end push check the end with my hand and my left hand and make sure it's flat push out to the right with the iron then coming across to the left and pushing out after I've made sure it's flat and then going up to the top and pushing out and now we've got a nice neatly folded hanky it has gone down to around about a quarter of its natural size or its full size and then we put it aside and start again now I'm going to have a go at doing a pair of my husband's cargos I'm a bit funny about doing trousers because I really like to have a seam down the center of the leg and what I'm going to do to try and create that seam is I'm going to initially fold the trousers with the four leg seams together and then I'm going to hang them down in front of me so that they drop nicely and I've now got them folded in the way that I want them to end up hanging on the coat hanger so they've got their seams down the seams down the middle and they're virtually how I want them to hang on the hanger and let's be honest this is normally what I would do with them and I wouldn't bother ironing them um, because I'm lazy but <laughs> when I do iron them this is how I do it and of course COVID has helped that a little bit because um, we haven't been going out so I haven't had to iron it's been the best eight to ten months of my life <laughs> all right so I've laid them down on the um, board and I've actually still got both legs together at this point now that I've got them laying on the board I've got the cuff at the far edge away from me and the rest of the trousers hanging off the other side of the board towards me because I only iron one leg at a time and because I like to iron the inside of the leg first I'm going to take this top leg and I'm going to drop it down in front of me and let it just hang down now I've got the inside of one leg here on the board and for a change it's beautiful it's got no creases so I'll pick up the iron again and bring that across to put onto the um, trousers and iron now one thing I'm very very careful of is that when I'm ironing wherever the iron goes my left hand is in the opposite place so at the moment the iron is away from me the left hand is close to me as I bring the iron towards me I move the left hand either off to the side or to the opposite end of the trousers I've done about one width of the ironing board I'm going to now pick the trousers up and move the leg across so that I now have a second width of the ironing board worth of the trousers to iron this piece has got a little bit more uh, 
crinkles in it. I'll just try and see if I can get some of those out before I start ironing. Not too bad, got most of them out. So I'll bring the iron over, just going to straighten the right hand edge with my left hand as I iron to get those few creases out that were there. And there we go. Second section iron, all nice. And then move to the third section. Now this is the section that has the crutch and the pockets. So it takes just a little bit more organizing to make sure that you get it all correct. There we go. Just tug it and pull it, push it and shove it, swear at it, just to try and make sure that you get all the creases out before you put the iron on it. Okay. And now a sighted person, as far as I would understand, would actually um, pull these creases out as they're ironing. But because I can't afford to have my hands anywhere near where the iron is, I like to make sure that I've got as many creases out as possible before I actually put the iron onto the garment. Ironing as a blind person actually requires quite a bit of two factors. One is body awareness. So being aware of where your hands are. Not only the hand that's not ironing, or just to let you know, I've turned over this leg and now I'm ironing up the outside of the leg. Uh, so, and I don't have to do much um, crease getting out here because of course we did it when we were on the inside. And there's a nice big pocket here for me to create some creases in. That'll be lovely. So, as I was saying, the ironing requires uh, body awareness so that it is that you do not actually put the iron on your left or your non-ironing hand. And it also requires quite a lot of spatial awareness in terms of where the clothes are on the board. That ensures that you don't go off ironing parts of the board where there isn't any clothes because ironing takes enough time and is bad enough without going off and ironing bits that you don't have to iron. Now there is a pocket here in these trousers. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip the waistband over the end of the board and just iron this little piece here near the pocket just to make it look a little bit neater because I couldn't get to that bit while I had them. There we go, just iron that nice little pocket there and the back pocket turned out okay, so that's fine. And then we just swap to the other leg and repeat that whole process all over again. Trousers all hung up and put away. Now I'm going to have a go at a shirt I have a lovely friend who bought my husband these beautiful cotton shirts. The only thing wrong with cotton is they turn out horrible. This has got all creases and it all looks ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to iron this shirt. I would have had to have ironed it whether I wanted to or not because they are disgusting. I start with the collar and I iron the inside of the collar first. Again, making sure it's flat, starting with my left hand on the right hand point of the collar, putting the iron on and following the line of the collar right across to the far side, keeping my hand in front of the iron the whole way. Now I turn it over and iron the outside of the collar. This is the bit you wanna make sure really doesn't have any creases because of course this is the bit 
that people are looking at. I will do that, starting again from the right hand point of the collar and moving across. There we go. Now, the next piece that I do is the sleeves. What I do is I actually find the underarm seam and get that flat, then lay the, this is a short sleeve shirt, so that makes it a bit easier, lay the sleeve on the board and make sure that it has no creases. Have to be particularly careful of the cuffs because they do tend to crease a little bit more than the rest. Once I've got it happy, I'll just iron just this little part of the sleeve, nothing else. Making sure that I get down into the corners under the arm and right up into the shoulder. Made a nice crease in the arm. So when you wear it, it'll have a lovely crease right down the centre of the arm. And turn it over and do the other side. Wouldn't be nice to have, oops, oh, created a crease. So just undo that, sort it, sort it out now. Didn't actually manage to iron that crease in. I actually spotted it with my left hand before I ironed it in, which was good. Just meant I could straighten it out and, and start again. Swap to the other sleeve. Again, find the underarm sleeve seam, straighten it out and put it down. Make sure that it's got no creases and go again. Starting from the cuff, working your way in. Now, it's hard to explain for those of you who can't see how much my left hand jumps from place to place um, just to ensure that what I've ironed is correct and also to make sure that I know where the iron is going to go to next. Second side. This side turned out nice already. There we go. After I've ironed the body of the shirt, I like to do the yoke of the shirt. That's the piece that is just below the collar before the back of the shirt starts. So I spread the yoke over the board with the point of the board inside one of the sleeves. And now I'll iron from the middle of the yoke out towards the sleeve that I've got over the end of the board. And then I'll swap the shirt around, put the end of the board through the other sleeve and iron the other half of the yoke from the centre out to that sleeve that's on the end of the board. There we are. And here we have an ironed shirt. Sometimes when I'm in a really good mood, and I'll do it now just to prove my point, when I'm in a really good mood, I'll actually fold the collar down and put it on the board on the inside only and just fold the iron the, iron the collar into the position that it will be when it's being worn. It just makes it look a little bit nicer when you hang it on the hanger. So do the inside and now the outside. So now when the shirt gets put on, the person wearing it doesn't even have to fold down the collar because it's already all ironed into place. 
So yeah, everybody, that is it for today's video. Thank you, Mum, for helping. And I'm sure Dad will also thank you for ironing his shirt and his cargoes. I'm and sure his he will. Handkerchiefs. I think he will. So I hope that you have learnt something. Obviously, I'm too lazy to iron myself. So thank you, Mummy, for helping out. <laughs> no problem. Uh, if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to Mel's Blind Life. Click the bell notifications so that you're made aware of all my new uploads. And also leave a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.